Good morning, good afternoon everyone, and thank you for joining our Startup Genome Global Webinar Series. Today's topic, how your tech ecosystem can be successful in attracting tomorrow's unicorn. And as always, we have two of the exact same sessions to allow for a, our global audience, uh, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. London time, this session, and 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. San Francisco time. So for today's agenda, we will be introducing first off the webinar and uh, the incredible organizations we have here today as our guest speakers. And then we will move into how your tech ecosystem can be successful in attracting tomorrow's unicorns. We'll then move into hearing about what's the impact and the open questions and discussion section. So first off, an introduction and the purpose of the Startup Genome webinar series. So the purpose is to highlight specific tangible topics for startup ecosystem acceleration, producing sustainable ecosystem growth globally. We explain how we at Startup Genome aim to do this as well as our partners. And we always wanna hear your feedback, what topics you'd like to hear more of. Previous topics recently have included funding policy to support startups and scale-ups during COVID-19 and multiplying ecosystem growth and policy impact, a data-driven assessment and prioritization of gaps to build your ecosystem strategy. And they can all be found on our YouTube channel. And everyone from who is registered for these sessions will receive the slides. So you all have all these, uh, these integrated links in these presentations uh, within 24 hours after today. A future topic that we're very excited about is using a cloud-based data platform to track and support your startup ecosystem. We will have Yoram Wingard, the founder and CEO of Dealroom, at our usual times of 8 a.m. London and 8 a.m. San Francisco on the 6th of April. So a very brief um, and a very exciting introduction um, for who we have here today. We have Stefan Koister, a head of ecosystem strategy at Startup Genome. We're very delighted to have Arno Nierhoff, the director of ecosystems at the Next Web based in Amsterdam, as well as Roger Costa, the de deputy director of FDI at Catalonia Trade and Invest. So uh, I've included everyone's emails here um, already. So if you have any questions, feel free during the webinar or post webinar to, to reach out uh, for more in-depth questions. But um, for now, it's my pleasure to uh, first off hand over to Stefan, who will introduce very briefly about Startup Genome, followed by Anna, and then followed by Roger. So Stefan. Thank you, Adam. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I'm Stefan, based here in London in uh, this morning. Who are we? Startup Genome. Many of you will know us. Um, our origins lie in research. We, see, we thought to codify the knowledge about ecosystem development and design and put ideas, concepts into data about 10 years ago and have today morphed into what is still a research company with a strong focus on startup innovation, tech innovation, but also, also build capabilities around policy advice and are working today with about 100 different cities in 40 plus countries, advising on accelerating the startup idea, bringing the startup idea, the knowledge to, to these places, accelerating their development, um, creating real economic impact with very practical advice. That's pretty much us. Um, and what we are particular, and I'm particular proud of is, and you're all part of this today, this morning for joining us. We've, we've been quite successful in creating a global network of politicians, policy makers, as well as practitioners, the leaders of ecosystem agencies, initiatives all across the world with one single purpose. And the single purpose is peer exchange. So whenever you've got a question, you want to discuss it with somebody in London, in Singapore, in Kerala, um, or in, in Nur Sultan, Kazakhstan, that's absolutely possible where we talk about our successes, our ideas, but more importantly, also our failures. So we would love as many uh, of you as, as possible to join our global network in this movement where we really share information about ecosystem development. This webinar and the entire series is part of it, an expression of this interest and purpose. And I think uh, without further ado, let's really get into it um, with an introduction, first of all, by Arne, and then followed by Costa. Thanks so much both for joining us and, and for helping us spread the knowledge about ecosystem development and today particularly about building a scale-up segment and attracting scale-ups to our ecosystems. Arne, may I have it handed over to you briefly? Yeah, thanks, Stefan, and thanks, Star Genome, for, for having us. Um, yeah, let me briefly introduce TNW. So we were founded 15 years ago. 
um, small events and really build out to become a large player in the global tech ecosystem. Um, basically, our goal is to um, inform, inspire, and connect people all over the world with, with, with our services, which you can see on the next slide. Um, so we have four, four parts for business units. So we um, have a media unit, which reaches around 8 million readers per month. So right about uh, the new CEO of Uber, but also um, ecosystems all over the world, what's happening there. Um, we have our annual event, an extra conference, um, and um, we're in multiple now digital events all over the world. Um, and um, so basically every year uh, we attract around 20,000 people with uh, with the largest brands out there. And last year, for instance, we had 60 uh, national local ecosystems uh, joining the event. Um, we have our spaces, so we um, have a couple of co work spaces and we have innovation programs. So we do a lot of tech ecosystem boosting programs um, with, with a lot of you all over the world. Um, I think we wrote down a couple on the next slide. Let me say that just very briefly. We were so delighted to do an event with you early in the spring where we couldn't go to physical conferences due to lockdown, couch conference on ecosystem development. And for all of you on the call, if you're interested in super high profile discussions about a huge variety of topics, most of it is to be found on TNW's site um, as well as on YouTube. Um, really interesting um, content. So delighted. And that's maybe the best expression of from somebody who has, who has been collaborating with you directly on, on yeah. all of these events. Uh, super nice and maybe also good to mention is actually that um your report launch was um at the conference uh two years ago and it was yeah super nice to super nice to have all these ecosystem players uh, there as well yeah some of the ecosystems that we boosted let's not go over that too long but it's a variety of um, um brands all over the world and yeah maybe one case i want to highlight to show a little bit how we do it so um for south korea um, we've been a partner for uh, four years now, so we started off with yeah, actually one of their soft landing programs, uh, also the topic of the day. Um, that was in 2017, 2018. And basically there we recognize that we have a yeah, really big, big reach in the, in the global startup ecosystem. So we've got 700, 572 applications in from all over Europe for yeah, companies that actually want to expand their business into South Korea. And um, yeah, before that, we already welcomed 34 startups from Korea to our event. And then we started showcasing the successes of the ecosystem on our media platform. And um, yeah, in the last months of 2020, uh, we launched a joint campaign with, um, with the Financial Times, which um, yeah, also took a majority stake in TNW in 2019. So really, yeah, joining forces with them as well to, to highlight success of ecosystems. You can go to the next slide. That's it. Um, I think it's uh, now the stage for uh, Roger, I guess. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks, uh, Startup Genome, uh, for the invitation. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. I would like to say hello also to all the organizations uh, attending today. Uh, some of them are uh, nice colleagues of us, uh, some European IPAs and uh, municip municipalities, etc. So uh, hello to, to all of you. Um, before explaining in a couple of minutes what is Catalonia Trade and Investment, let me uh, uh, tell you that Catalonia is a, is a region in Spain, in the northeast of Spain. Uh, and it is, in fact, uh, a Spanish and European powerhouse in terms of in, in industry and, uh, and commercial activity. Uh, we have been uh, for centuries uh, leading uh, industrial uh, activity in Spain, leading the uh, Industrial Revolution in, in the 18th century and for many centuries um, uh, developing uh, an important commercial relationships with uh, relationship with other regions and, and countries initially in the Mediterranean zone, but after, after it, uh, uh, globally speaking. So uh, we have been as a, as a region in Spain and in Europe, we have been named 
a top five startup hub in Europe. And we have been recently awarded as a, one of the best Southern uh, regions in terms of FDI uh, opportunities. And also, um, and, and in this, uh, in this uh, occasion by the next web and the Financial Times, we were uh, awarded last year, uh, Barcelona especially, as the second best uh, city in Europe in terms of technology projects attraction. So that means that uh, we are very proactive in terms of promoting uh, foreign investment, promoting uh, uh, the startup ecosystem and promoting international relationships uh, with other countries and, and, and inviting foreign companies to come uh, to our country to operate and develop uh, innovation uh, and, and disrupt the future. Uh, Catalonia Trade and Investment is, an, is a Catalan government agency. Uh, we, we have more than 35 uh, years in our uh, back, um, helping companies, helping Catalan companies to expand uh, globally, to be present in, uh, to have presence in, 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 in the third part countries, uh, to internationalize their, their activities. Also promoting uh, innovation and technology transfer between Catalonia and the world and, and vice versa. And, and because of we understand the competitiveness of Catalonia uh, um, with the three angles, internationalization, innovation, and uh, for investment attraction, we have a division, uh, which I am in charge of the promotion, uh, devoted to assisting foreign companies to come to our country and invest in our, in our region. Uh, we work free of charge uh, and the confidentiality always and trying to provide with the tailor-made services uh, to the foreign investors, understanding that each type of company, each moment of the history uh, need, uh, uh, needs a different support and different approach and different, um, yes, uh, different services. So we, what we are trying for more than 35 years is to provide with solutions uh, according to the investors' needs and trying to provide with this support in, in, with the tailor-made services. I'm gonna go uh, deeper in this sense afterwards. Thank you very much. Thanks for, for the introduction to, to Catalonia. And apart from all the hard and, and clear facts, uh, it is also uh, an environment, creativity, culture, um, quality of life that really stands out. Many of my friends here out of London actually have chosen to either relocate or at least to set up significant businesses, both in Barcelona and Valencia. And they've never regretted making the decision. So that's always good when you hear it from the horse's mouth, uh, so to speak. Okay, um, we want to set the scene a little bit with a few, only a few data points and why it is so important to attract tomorrow's and to build tomorrow's unicorns, taking unicorn only as a, as, as a, as a buzzword, what we really mean as a scale up segment in a city, in a region. Um, and the positive effects you can expect from that and the huge importance. Overall, where are we today? Ecosystem, the startup ecosystem in its value is about 2.8 trillion globally. That's on par with the G7 economy. So we are not longer talking about a side industry. We are talking about a major economic factor in every city, in every region, in every country in the world. Here in the UK, it contributes about 10% to GDP, according to technicians' estimates. So uh, that's maybe something to take away just to set up the, the discussion properly. And, and Adam, let's quickly move through the, the following slides. Taking a look at recession, and uh, there's, there's this famous saying, there's never, never, never waste a good recession as an opportunity for development. Here we are looking back a little bit with these data into 0910, one of the worst financial crises um, the all world has, has, has seen. And we could see tech emerging as the driving force that took us out of recession. These data show you job creation in the US, but I can tell you the situation in London at that time was very similar. Tech built the third pillar here in the city and allowed us to progress again to create high, high value jobs as we came out of the financial crisis. And that's something um, I'm seeing, we are seeing as a firm here every day as politicians are planning for the upcoming recession due to the 
resulting from, from the current pandemic and are looking at tech and startup entrepreneurship as one of the, the means in their policy arsenal in order to drive high quality employment. We'll bring this back to the discussion around scale ups in, in one or two slides um, to show you the impact of scale ups from a politician's perspective, value creation, job creation. And Adam, if you move to the next. We also made a point to many politicians um, based on our COVID research, what's actually, if, if you consider taxpayers dollars, where should you invest at the moment? Traditional SMEs, larger corporations, should you prop them up? Should you consider your startup ecosystem? And we found with data, us being startup genome, we take data first and talk about data, it on average globally to be 41% cheaper to prop up to support a job a high quality job in a startup in, um, as opposed to in a traditional industry. So you can leverage any intervention you have from a policy perspective much further than it would go in a traditional industry. Um, and moving to the next. Thank you. What data also shows us is that the world of R&D and innovation has fundamentally changed over the last decade. When we look back, we all may, may remember the IT powerhouses in Taiwan and so and how they progressed in, this, in the 80s, 90s. Uh, there was traditional R&D, universities and corporations. And that model, when you look at economic impact, has run its course. And, and the winners today are rather the Silicon Valley, the Torontos, Toronto Waterloo, the Vancouver's, the Barcelona's, um, that, that are actually embracing what we call ambidextrous ecosystems. So ecosystems environments, where the one hand, that's university, academic research, prowess, labs, PhDs and professors, and on the other hand side, very agile founders and startup ecosystems really come together in order to develop innovation, but also take it out to market for commercial use. So again, just a, a very clear message, the startup ecosystems and their scale-up segments are so incredibly important for broader economic development. Let's take it one step further. That's all good news. And there's not a single city and mayor I've spoken to over the last five or so years that is not interested in startups. We have seen the proliferation of startup ecosystems nearly all around the world in developing markets, uh, sorry, in highly mature markets, all the way to, to developing in frontier states. What has not really proliferated and has been democratized is access to scale up segments. And what you see here are the very few cities out of hundreds that have actually managed to create ecosystems that show companies with valuations above 50 million US dollars, just as a proxy. This is not a unicorn, it's the 20th of a unicorn, but it is a measure, a proxy for where does scaling actually start? Where do you have companies that are not five or 10 people, but 50, 100 that create all the value that comes with scaling? And maybe as a negative news, that's, that certainly has not yet proliferated as much as we would have hoped. So lots of startup ecosystems, the simple message, the scaling is, is lacking. And the question is, how do we bring these scaling companies, obviously, into our environment? Okay, next. Job creation. Um, we did a bit of an anal analysis for, for one of our clients, actually in Germany here. We tried to model how far can we get with a certain strategy until the year 2025, so a realistic scenario, four or five years. And we honed in with our data on what happens if you, if you further foster startup creation, early stage companies. What is going to happen from a job creation perspective, if you really focus on the scale-up segment, if you are successful in organically creating scale-ups, but also attracting them to, to your region, model the number of scenarios. And what I find really striking is three data points and just look at them. If they don't do anything at all, no intervention and, and the ecosystem develops as, as is, we would expect to add um, uh, 1,680 jobs in scale-ups. There's no intervention. That, that is going to happen in five years time or four and a half years time. If you have certain interventions and growth, we will drive this number up to 12,500. Then we have a number of multiplier effects uh, that we can see in our data. So every time a job gets created in the start of scale up, you have additional effects in the wider economy, services, industries, et cetera, of a factor of approximately four. So this gives you a total in the end of almost 99,000 jobs, highly qualified, reasonably highly paid. That's an economic factor. That's that's an important one. That's just one small uh, one, one region in Germany. It's not even an entire country. So in a sense, comparable, Roger, to, to Catalonia. Um, I think that's 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 a message policymakers need to hear, need to understand. That's the language typically that really resonates. As, sim as simple as it, as, it's, as, it, as, it, as it looks. Okay, let's have a look at our next one, and then then we, we will take it over to the discussion. Um, what we are also hearing a lot in startup genome is scale up 
creation is always a funding problem. Whenever you talk to somebody organically creating scale-ups in an ecosystem, but also attracting them, it's all about funding. Can I attract somebody by offering late stage funding? Do I have a wealth and a deep pool of late stage funding? That's typically the myth that, that we are hearing a lot. And we believe it is the myth because in the end, and we can show it in data, scale up success is a compound measure rather than a single factor. It is not funding. It is much more, the data show it very clearly. Founder ambition and culture. We have the right people with the right mindset and the right knowledge and background, serial entrepreneurs. Connections to top ecosystems, something we call in the internal speak global connectedness. Are, are we already connected as a Barcelona to the London, to the Singapore's um, of the world, the Amsterdam's and, and vice versa? And are we learning from each other? And access to growth talent. And I, I believe Roger, you will tap, you, you will you will focus on that as well as Arne to say, how do we actually get that growth talent that sits somewhere else and attract it to our environment? Late stage funding. From my perspective, a clear function of quality. The moment you get investable startups in your environment, scale-ups, international investment, Series B, C, and onward will come. This is not a question of the supply of capital in a particular location. And I think that's that's also an important one to hear. Also means you don't need to put out a lot of money in order to attract scaling companies to your region because international investment will find them wherever they grow. Moving one forward. Bit of an introduction, but I really wanted to make a case here for startups, for, for scale-ups, show you the importance. We need to do more, to have more scale-ups in many more places in the world because of economic impact, because of their knowledge impact to their ecosystems, their job creation capability. So how do we attract them? And that's that's exactly the, the discussion we want to have right now. How can we attract the scale-ups? Um, and what's the impact in the end and how we can measure it? Yeah. Um, thanks, Stefan. Uh, not a nice bridge. And maybe for us also to, to start a little bit like uh, looking into all the key activities that you're probably already doing or the portfolio that you're already working on. So if you start talking about attracting companies, like what, when do you need to do it? Why do you need to do it? Um, so I, in the MVP stage, you're really trying to add, get the data in, define your strategy. In the seed stage, you're trying to build up the local um, foundation for success and making sure that all the vehicles in your ecosystem are successful and built for growth. And then also um, what Stefan me mentioned, the global connectiveness, um, when you're in a growth stage, you really want to go out with um, uh, with your success and also use the success to attract companies. So in that phase, it starts to become more, most interesting to, to attract companies. We often had conversation about attracting companies when there was not, not the foundation to actually um, uh, to attract high scale, high scaling companies. So it's it's important that you do have the the events, the net, the, the VC angel networks, also enough talent to basically um, be part um, of that whole ecosystem. So what I always see is that this is most interesting for for growing tier two or even tier one ecosystems. So being a little bit um, further further in your development. Let's say if you're there and you're you're talking about ecosystem branding, you have your international event strategy ready, you have your um, your global networks, then it's come uh, then it's becoming quite important to also start thinking about okay how can I actually get the right inbound of companies, and maybe to to also yeah maybe why I think it's very interesting and important. You see a lot of like the, the whole war for talent and war and the the, the importance of, of tech ecosystem for the economy starts to become more and more visible to the, to, the, to the wider world. And I think that like in the last five years, like the, the startup insert region, uh, like the, the amount of policy and the amount of initiatives to boost the startup ecosystems, they have become, yeah, I mean, almost every city, like even in the Netherlands, you have small towns that have their own startup um, initiative and that for me also tells a lot about the urgency and and the importance of, of yeah building startup ecosystems but I, what I then see is that these these cities are competing a little bit and some of the cities they actually do actively attract companies from um, from outside but a lot of them they, they don't do it yet and what is interesting is that it's actually way easier to attract a company um, than to build a fast-growing company in your own ecosystem. 
So that's a little bit where I, where I feel that there is definitely room or where you see that there is a distinction between winners and losers. Um, where I think that if you don't start actively attracting, then you're probably your neighbor country um, who's actually have, uh, having a program in place. Uh, they, um, yeah, they might just win, um, win one on you. So that's a bit the um, situation where we're in. I think it's yeah, definitely um, an, something interesting to, um, yeah, to talk about more. Let's put it like that. Maybe, Adam, if you can show a little bit how that, how that looks, like what programs that we see, like a little bit like talk about um, what is a soft landing program? How, does, how do you attract companies, right? So what I did is I worked a little bit on um, a template on how you can do it as a city. So what, what we also always see is that like in order to attract companies, you, the foundation need to be right. So you need to, you need to make sure that's integrated with your strategy. So making sure for instance, if you start attracting companies that um, you're say Barcelona and your focus on, you have a huge focus on travel tech, just mentioned, probably not true, but say travel tech making sure that you have the foundation ready that you make that part of the proposition is is um, you have high importance also make sure that it's it's uh, supported by the local ecosystem it's always a little bit like situation where you need to you need to make sure that you do it with the ecosystem and if you don't do it to the ecosystem um, you build a proposition so making sure it's attractive for companies to go there so making sure that you highlight the perks of your ecosystem in a nice way and maybe even the perks of the program um, and then you start attracting. So going out there to the market, not just wait for inbound, but really trying to find the companies that have most reason to come. So looking at your own proposition and translate that to the startups that are out there. And select the ones not per se, well, of course you want to select the good ones, but also the ones where you think these have an actual good plan to become successful within our ecosystem. And there's always a physical, or at least there, there is a moment where the engagement starts. Nowadays, of course, um, it's really difficult to, um, to, to attract and basically get them to, for physical soft landing. So really, um, uh, yeah, say a speed course to, for a company to get to know the ecosystem. Um, we also see this happening digitally. So with matchmaking events, with the local ecosystem, so for instance, five scale ups that meet with the local corporate environment, with mentors that know the culture really well, um, with, um, with later stage investors already spark a little bit like, hey, is this something for me? And then uh, once the, the current situation, the COVID situation gets to a bit of an end where we feel more comfortable with international travel, um, you can do the, uh, the speed course a bit more face to face. So, on the bottom of the slide, you see how this is um, how this looks like. Um, most um, cities do this in yeah around six months uh, time frames. You can do multiple a year. If you then look into like why should you actually do it? I mean, as I think uh, Stefan already mentioned, like scale ups are are the growth for um, yeah for, for the economy. And if if you attract a company to expand their business. Um, and they already proven to be successful in a different geography. Um, it's going to lead to job creation. Um, and it's a, it's a reason for talent uh, to stay. Sometimes it's in, in cities, you need to have those success cases uh, for your tech talent to not move to, say, the capital of, of, your, uh, of your nation, but really to stick into a, a mid-sized uh, city. And it's also a bit to showcase your success um, you can really um, yeah, tell nice stories about a certain the industry that you selected, how you're becoming more and more attractive in that. And also as a diversification in, in industry, I mean, if Roger tells, uh, says, hey, we want to be big in travel tech and you start attracting those travel tech companies, then it's, it's becoming um, more of a self-fulfilling prophecy every batch that you run it. So I think that's a little bit the power of, of the, the attraction programs. Um, and I think Adam, you can go to the next slide. Yeah, maybe Roger is good if you explain a little bit how that works. Adam, within Adam maybe just just allow me. I, I find find this point so it's so interesting. So in, 
in a sense, formulating a very clear proposition because there, there's obviously in scale-up attraction, there's one danger. If you don't do it with a very compelling proposition, you may end up with getting a sales office. So UK, a US-based or wherever-based scale-up successful will come to your place, will come to your city, but they will set up a sales office and sell to you. This is not necessarily job creation. It is not value creation. It doesn't innovate in your place. It doesn't transfer knowledge. At scale, it's so really find these drivers on it. You put it in a way as Barcelona and, uh, and Roger will, will, will tell us this, what's really here. Travel tech could be such an idea. You mentioned Seoul very briefly, one of the academic and research powerhouses when it comes to um, telecommunications, when it, when it comes to IT tech. So there's a great potential in order to go there in order to develop highly technical solutions. This is much more, the proposition is much more than just selling to the Korean market, which after all is not that large. So really formulating this, this clear proposition. I'm sometimes surprised when I talk to scale up founders, when you ask them, where do you want to go next? It feels sometimes very opportunistic. It's the US, it's North America, it's China or Southeast Asia, it's, it's, it's Europe. I mean, you have, you've just mentioned the three largest continents economically in the world. That is not a location strategy, really. That's opportunistic and then, then they, they are hoping for the best, really to, to unpick for people, for scale-up founders, and the executive teams to understand where's the best opportunity to further grow, um, <clears throat> to further develop and bring some competences and diverse talent into their company they can't tap um, yeah. locally. Um, yeah, and Roger, um, Maybe give us give us a little bit your Thank thoughts you. on what's happening in Catalonia. Yeah, no. Regarding this last point, uh, we absolutely agree uh, on that, and in fact, we are uh, moving further in in the sense of trying to understand uh, what kind of uh, not only companies but but especially uh, type of projects that we want for our country. Uh, we will very welcome uh, a, a global leader uh, willing to put a sales office in our region, in our, in our country, but we will try to engage this company to put more and, and to bet on Catalonia in terms of putting more value in, in, in its projects, in, in, in our city, in our country, in terms of uh, manufacturing activity, in terms of uh, technology, trend, um, technology transformation, digital transformation. We are trying to invite uh, foreign companies to uh, establish their uh, their their uh, subsidiaries in Catalonia, but not only for for, for uh, considering us as a market or as a door to the European market, but uh, but also for for adding value to our region. So that point is very very important and very very clear to us. I also agree absolutely with what you were uh, you were saying, Stefan, in terms of that. Uh, that uh, if you want to attract uh, um, international startups or, or, or the unicorns of tomorrow, is not only about the uh, having uh, uh, huge opportunities in terms of funding, but especially the offer, uh, offering the chance to access to connections and uh, and especially to talent, and that's uh, what uh, moved me to to my 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 recommendation in terms of what's the what are the ingredients that the region should have or at least in our case what what are the the factors that uh, make us uh, be an interesting uh, region in terms of foreign investment and in terms of uh, international uh, startups uh, I put on the slide the five sectors and I'm going to go a bit into these five ideas uh, very, very quick. Uh, for us, what is important is the combination of these five factors, technology, industry, talent, location, and within location, we understand that is important or especially important the connectivity, physical and digital connectivity uh, from, from, our, uh, from Barcelona and our, our country, Catalonia to the world and solutions for companies. And that's also linked to what uh, Arno was explaining in terms of what uh, can we offer to, to companies. So technology in our case means um, have an important network of techno uh, tech uh, centers, technology centers, 
uh, universities uh, devoted to prepare the future professionals in engineering, IT, etc. Uh, coding academies uh, preparing for the for the for the professionals uh, requested and and needed uh, from the industry part. Uh, have, uh, we have also important um, public policy in terms of clusters. We have uh, around 100 clusters in Catalonia, uh, very innovative. And in fact, the, the, we, we were one of the regions in Europe leading the, the, the policy clusters uh, uh, activities and, and development. Uh, our reference are for sure Singapore, Canada, the Nordic countries, Germany, France, but we have also an important activity in this sense and very proactive clusters, gathering all the players in the, in the, in the industry and engaging or trying to, uh, to, to impulse them to be more techy in their uh, respective activities. We have around 41% of the most innovative companies uh, already operating in Catalonia. And that means that if we have big companies doing uh, innovation in our country, the talent will come and the new technologies and new solu tech uh, solutions from startups will come as well. Um, as I said, uh, creating the ground for uh, having a nice and vibrant startup ecosystem for uh, for for uh, for promoting the international exchange of technologies and also for providing with solutions to the to the industry and for sure funding for funding alternative with local and international funds. Second industry, uh, we are uh, we have around 20% uh, of our GDP coming from the industrial activity. If we consider the related services to industry, it's around 50% of industrial uh, related activity uh, in terms of GDP. And um, despite we know that uh, attracting industrial projects from abroad, uh, it is um, uh, more and more difficult uh, every day and that the industrial activity is generally going maybe to the Eastern Europe, to China and Asia, etc. We, we really want and need to still uh, be an industrial region in Europe and that's one of our uh, goals. We, we want to be an industrial region because uh, if not, uh, we cannot uh, offer this mix of factors uh, attractive for, for, for international startups and the, the unicorns of the future. Talent, uh, third factor, very important for us is the most important factor in terms of competitiveness. And I have to say here that we have been a huge uh, work in terms of talent retain, retention. And, and, and trying to, to guarantee the talent availability for international companies. And our challenge now is uh, what have to be, uh, what should be our role in terms of talent attraction. But we can go to this point afterwards. Um, uh, five, location. Location means a geographic uh, or geostrategic position. And here, uh, I, I, I guess that all regions, cities uh, and countries uh, can say that they have uh, an excellent and unique uh, location. But I, I prefer to go deeper in the connectivity and connections with the world. And as you were mentioning, Stefan, location for us means uh, to have access to markets. And we are a good platform to access to European market for Asia and North America and LATAM uh, means also that uh, it is important for us to have a, an important and global reference events uh, like uh, Mobile World Congress or the ISE. Uh, if the corona, coronavirus uh, let us, we will have next uh, June, July, the uh, uh, European Integrated System uh, event, uh, working jointly with the next web, uh, some ac important activities within this, this Congress. And for us, it's very important because it's the, it's, it's the, the way to showcase what's happening in Catalonia to the world. And connections and connectivity also in the digital sense. So we need uh, 5G connectivity, we need uh, tech solutions for the companies, 
and we have uh, we have it is compulsory for us to to be at the at the maximum maximum level in terms of digital uh, connectivity. For instance, to move forward with the vehicle of the future, connected car and autonomous car in in our country. And last but not least, solutions. Solutions mean to th means uh, mean two things. Uh, first of all, pub public policies to, to guarantee that the international companies and international startups will have the, the ideal uh, ecosystem and soft landing solutions. And just one example, we should uh, move forward and, and work uh, harder uh, in terms of having uh, the tech visa for international startups like uh, France or Portugal already has. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, this is on one hand, and on the other hand, solutions for companies. Solutions for companies means, and that's why we have 40 offices worldwide uh, in uh, covering more than 100 markets. Uh, solutions for companies means to be very close to the uh, to our clients, to the to the companies, to really understand their needs and to provide with uh, with the proper solutions. Uh, when they decide to invest in our region. And finally, um, uh, for providing with solutions, we need uh, uh, collaborations and we need to, to public and private uh, partnerships. And that's what we are doing in Barcelona with uh, very important players like uh, Barcelona Tech City or Barcelona Activa. Much. That's, that's a very comprehensive framework, technology, industry, talent, diversity of talent, location choice, uh, but also policy solutions, government solutions, support solutions. Really delighted to hear. And we got an interesting question coming in from Gerald, actually, saying, do you see any particular correlation between unicorns, scale-ups, choosing a location and proximity to capital or talent? I do have an opinion here. I think I already gave it away in the interim. Um, what other factors? Bye impacting the concentration of scale-ups. So maybe Roger, Arne, um, your thoughts on, is there a correlation? And what is the most important one? Or is it is it a number of, of success factors we should be looking at? Yeah, so um, I think that we, like, so, so the data is, is not like, we're, you're the data professor, you can probably back it with data later. Uh, but my, my feeling is that talent or that Scale-ups often go for, well, uh, for, look for the, for the right talent. So if it's of a huge importance that there is a large talent pool that fits the company. So I can still remember when Uber opened this EMEA office in Amsterdam. Um, that was, so within the next rep, we played, we played a little bit of a role there, um, mainly lobbying for the, um, also for the city government. And their main reason to come to Amsterdam was um, the, the amount of talent that was available. The, and that is, of course, like that is universities, but that is, that is also the, 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 the rest of the tech, tech ecosystem that's already out there. So people that are tech savvy, that have a skill, a background, that know how to grow a company. Um, also a lot now a big uh, platform market in Amsterdam. So all those elements, um, come into play and when it just comes about then I think in fairness um, so uh, Stefan you also mentioned sometimes scale-ups are a little bit opportunistic I think that if we talk about the, the real big ones like Uber um, yeah things like taxes also just come into play so there has to be a good um, yeah, environment for, for those type of uh, for, for those elements um, and uh, still, like well, things that are getting advocated a lot is the quality of life. The, the, and that's also a big part of the talent um, argument, because if you want to get the best talent in, they want to settle for, for a certain degree of, 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 of life. If, if you cannot offer that, then at some point, your good people will go away. And I think that yeah, we see that in Amsterdam that, that we score quite high there. And I think Barcelona is really well um two i think those are yeah that, those are the main criteria and um, so yeah um, for ecosystems my advice would be make sure that you nail that part as a uh, yeah as a minimum thing that there you can um, you can win yeah, absolutely you mentioned the, the data perspective I, I gave it away in the introduction i'm not a believer in it's the availability 
ability of late stage capital, you will find that if you, if you need to, and it doesn't matter where it comes from at this stage of, of scale up development, but it's rather cultural environment, founder DNA. It is availability to diverse and sufficient amounts of, of diverse talent. And um, quite probably I'd also say policy. So if you're looking into developing particular solutions, let's, let's, let's look at deep tech. Um, we always take the, the simple examples. If you want to have autonomous vehicles and you want to have real development there, you need conducive policy, you need test beds, sandboxes, and so forth. And I believe, Roger, you touched a little bit upon that. So I'd really be interested to see what you do in Barcelona in regards to attracting diverse talent. And do you do any particular policy measures in order to drive up certain sectors um, of, of the startup ecosystem? Because I, I heard from, from you when, you when you were presenting, you look at clusters 40 or so um, around Catalonia and you do have sort of an industrial strategy. So you seem to have married up your, your broader economic strategy, development strategy, industrial strategy is what you do uh, for start and scale up attraction. Yes, what we, uh, as I was mentioning, what, what we especially do is uh, working with all the organizations, public and private, uh, in order to uh, guarantee the, the, the talent availability and, uh, and, and providing to the professionals with the, with the right uh, opportunities uh, to, to retain the, them. No? Uh, but in terms of talent, talent attraction, we have, uh, for many years, we have, uh, our approach has been uh, to try to attract the right uh, uh, productive and technology projects to Catalonia and the right companies in order to be uh, a, 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 a claim for international startup and, and, and an, an engagement issue for international startup to come. But what is clear is that uh, all countries uh, are in a kind of uh, war in terms of uh, talent attraction, especially digital and, and tech. And uh, what we start doing is uh, a kind of road shows, especially in Europe by now, um, and trying to uh, matching the companies already established in Catalonia uh, needs in terms of talent and, and trying to, as I, I was saying, matching these needs uh, with uh, the young talent uh, available in, in uh, third part countries. And so we go with, uh, with uh, big companies, uh, international or Catalan companies, to a third part country with uh, proposals in terms of job opportunities. And we try to facilitate this matchmaking with the young uh, digital and tech talent uh, in order to engage them to come to, to Catalonia. This is, a, we, have, uh, we have done uh, two or three uh, pilots in this sense, but we, we want to promote this because otherwise uh, we, we run the risk of, uh, of having some segments in the market especially with, with tech uh, profiles, uh, with a gap, and we cannot uh, allow uh, to happen this because the, the big companies need the talent uh, locally. On, on that note, the larger companies, and, and Telefonica has made it, I believe, in the beginning of the startup ecosystem and their VERA initiative have had an impact, a positive impact. How important is really the, the corporate landscape in order to attract these larger scaling companies? My, my simplistic view, if you've got a Telefonica headquarter, one of the largest telcos in the world in front of you, there's, there's a lot of business opportunity, a lot of co-development opportunity in a place. Um, are, are these corporations a large factor for you? I, th I believe you, you, you do similar things in life sciences, but I'm really interested to see what's, what's the impact here. Yeah, for sure, for sure, the, the, the collaboration with, uh, with the big company, in fact, we are already uh, doing, we are, uh, our, our, um, our uh, essence as a public agency is uh, working for and with uh, the private sector, and we absolutely uh, understand that our role is, uh, is as a facilitator and as a connector, but we go where um, big private companies uh, go 
and uh, we are uh, absolutely in our day by day uh, uh, related and linked to them in order to understand their needs and to uh, define new uh, new new opportunities new fields of working together for working for being work together and uh, and for sure that we uh, we work with uh, these big multinationals with these big local players in the sense of uh, of of having the the the, the talent availability uh, solved and and looking to the future in order to 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 advance to to the to the new trends and new challenges and and facing them together. Roger, for for shining a little bit of light in, in how how you address it, and I really see the huge opportunity. Um, we have another interesting question coming from Pedro Silva and asking um, in how far can can less less mature markets, so we are not talking North America or Europe, more uh, emerging developing economies, become more competitive in participating in the scale up development. And I think that's an interesting one. It's a challenging one. We've seen a lot of startup ecosystems emerging in developing markets and very nascent environments, none of them, or nearly none of them have created the scale-up segment systematically. There are some, some examples of individual companies that serve a particular local need, but it has not been an industrialized scale-up segment. There has not been the attraction that, that we would, would so much hope to see. And, and with the attraction, obviously, the spread of knowledge that, that foreign scaling companies can bring to a more nascent environment. Um, I don't know, Roger, um, Arne, you possibly have done some work in, in markets that, that are less mature. You might, may have a yeah, just, to offer you. Thank you, Stefan. Just a few words before Arno uh, uh, can enlighten us with, with uh, his position. But uh, in our case, uh, and taking into account, for instance, the last decade, we, we, we can cut it uh, cut this decade in three parts. Uh, 15 years ago, we, we were uh, nobody uh, in the in the world of startups. No, we, we had uh, an important companies uh, working for the as uh, web developers, uh, uh, waving the the dot com uh, age. Uh, we had many problems uh, with the dot com uh, crisis. And, and some individual uh, initiative, very interesting and important, but, but as an ecosystem, we were nobody 15, more, more or less 15 years ago. So we understood that first of all, what we, we, what we should do or do, what we had to do is to create the ground. So we start around at the very beginnings of the 2020s, uh, preparing the, the ground, uh, trying to join all the players, private and public ones, to prepare the, the ground for, for being someone in this world, no? in this startup uh, world. And that took us around five, 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 six years. We create in Catalonia Trade and Investment and a specific division for working with startups, which uh, which is uh, Catalonia startup uh, um, startup Catalonia, sorry, and we start running this division and and making this division grow because it was the specific uh, approach for 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 startups. It was around um, around ten years ago. Second part of this last decade uh, was when we start. Uh, promoting and explaining to the world to the world what was what was happening in Catalonia. So doing international promotion, uh, start participating to international congress, uh, making or um, taking the some sta Catalan startups and bringing them to the to the third part countries and exposing us to the world. This this was the second the second thing we 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 did in this last decade. And where we are now, we are now facing the next five, 10 years. And what we decided is to uh, move forward in terms of not only creating the ground and promoting internationally speaking what we are and what we do, but going, uh, segmenting um, or doing a segmentation of what kind of startups and what kind, if it's the case, 
uh, scale ups or unicorns, unicorns we won for for Catalonia. What kind of companies uh, have uh, any interesting uh, possibilities, uh, any kind of interesting possibilities and business opportunities in our in our country, and go for them? So. Uh, we are we are starting a proactive um, moment in terms of going for a certain profile, uh, segmenting segmenting the market, the international market in terms of startups, and inviting proactively inviting a specific profile of companies, uh, considering the or, or having been. Uh, Having um, a very clear idea of uh, of the of the opportunities in Catalonia and going for them and trying to attract in Catalonia with a all pack of services uh, behind us. Well, thank you so much for giving us us a lot of detail. Um, we we are this this fascinating discussion. Um, we could we could carry this on easily for for another hour. Unfortunately, we are already on the hour of our webinar, and I know Roger Arne, you have lots of concepts also around measuring impact, what can we do, scientific approach, quantity, quali qualitative, quantitative factors, etc. I think um, we won't get there today, unfortunately, but I really would encourage everybody participating today to reach out to Arne, to, to Roger, um, for insights on how can we actually provide measurement. Measurement is important because it tells a story. It allows to go back to policymakers and convince them. Here you can see see quite quite a lot of the data that Roger and, and Catalonia are providing, and I think the, the results are just fascinating. Maybe if I may ask, given given our time constraints, um, Anna, maybe one statement, one sentence as as a takeaway from today's session, Roger, and then allow me to to briefly close it. Thank you very much, Anna. Do you want to want to give it a start? Yeah, um, yeah. So I think that for soft landing and attraction programs, it, it struck me that not every ecosystem is doing it already um, because it's super easy to do. Um, it's it is the return on investment, even if you calculate really, um, yeah, realistic, even a bit conservative growth of the companies in your ecosystem. It um, it shows huge uh, return on investment. And I think it's yeah, it really allows you to 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 be ready for for basically the the wrong talent that is that is that I see going on uh, in in mo many ecosystems. So um, yeah, reach out to me if you want to hear more. I'm really looking forward to um, yeah to, to meet up with uh, some of you. And Roger, maybe last takeaway from your side. Yeah, no, the one, thanks, the one thing we should again. should keep on our mind. Thanks again to the organizers, Startup Genome. Uh, this is uh, about uh, learning day by day and with partners like Startup Genome and the next web is easier, is much easier. Is, uh, and, um, and just to say that uh, we are open to share uh, with uh, our colleagues in, our, in other agencies, IPAs, uh, city councils, etc. To share, we are open to share experiences and also to learn from them. So thanks to all the attendees today. Great, thank you everyone yeah. uh, very much. Uh, in terms of uh, how you can reach out to us, um, we have all our details um, here. Myself from Startup Genome, Anna from the Next Web, and and Roger. Um, and uh, we would just like to end on the note that. Uh, Thanks very much for attending today, and we'd be very delighted to have everyone um, at our next ecosystem development webinars on uh, in April, April 6th, where we'll be covering the topic of using a cloud-based data platform to track and support your startup ecosystem. So as I said at the start of uh, the webinar, everyone will receive these slides, which have all the links um, to all the, the sources and the data and the research. Um, so. Once again, thanks everyone for, for taking the time today and we look forward to uh, connecting soon and uh, hearing from you for any questions. Thanks a lot, Stefan. Thanks a lot, Roger. And thanks, Arno, very much uh, for this engaging session. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care. Reach out. <laughs>